We welcome you, dear viewers, through Nursat Saralai channel and Telenomir TV. Before the headlines, we would like to remind you that these days mark the 81st anniversary of the independence of the sisterly state of Lebanon. The Lebanese people are currently enduring difficult days due to the ongoing war waged by Israel on the Lebanese territories, cities and towns. The capital Beirut and southern cities are witnessing intense air and ground bombings as well as daily airstrikes, leaving martyrs and wounded among civilians. On the occasion of this anniversary, during these sorrowful days, the Nur Saad Saralai channel, represented by its director Dr. Basim Samhan and the entire team, extend their heartfelt prayers to God Almighty, asking the end of this war, the return of displaced people to their homes and regions, and the achievement of peace and stability throughout Lebanon. Now we begin with our following headlines. Pope Francis, the Christian hope which is realized in Jesus and continues in his kingdom, requires our commitment. His Majesty the King, we will continue to defend Jerusalem and its holy sites and preserve them based on the Hashmite custodianship. The General Secretariat of Christian Youth in Jordan appoints its members for the year 2025. St. John de la Salle Church in Jabal al-Hussein celebrates the Feast of Blessed Mary of the Passion. From the headlines to the details. On the occasion of the 8th Annual World Day of the Poor, which this year is celebrated under the theme, The Prayer of the Pool Reaches the Ear of God. His Holiness Pope Francis presided over a Mass at St. Peter's Basilica and delivered a sermon to the gathered crowd. In his homily, the Pope stated, When it seems that everything is collapsing completely, God comes, draws near, and gathers us to save us. He explained that we are living in a time where inequalities and disparities between people are increasing and the economy punishes the most vulnerable. Meanwhile, society dedicates itself to the worship of money, leaving the poor with nothing to do but continue waiting. The Pope added, in this situation, the Lord draws near to free us from slavery. And as his disciples, we can, with the help of the Holy Spirit, plant this hope in the world. He concluded by saying, we must not only look at the great problems of poverty in the world, but also at the small things which of us can do every day throughout care and attention to the environment we live in and through our tireless pursuit of justice. His Majesty King Abdullah II confirmed that a just and honorable peace is the way to lift the historical injustice from our Palestinian brothers, ensuring the restoration of their full rights despite all the obstacles and the extremism of those who do not believe in peace. During the opening of the 20th regular session of the National Assembly, His Majesty explained that the city of Jerusalem will remain a Jordanian priority and Jordan will continue to defend and preserve its holy sites based on the Hashemite custodianship, which is carried out with honor and trust. The king stressed that Jordan stands firmly against the aggressions on Gaza and the Israeli attacks on the West Bank. He also mentioned that Jordan is working through both Arab and international efforts to stop this war. His Majesty pointed out that the people of Jordan, both men and women, have made tremendous efforts standing to treat the wounded under the most difficult circumstances. He also noted that Jordanians were the first to deliver aid, both by air and land, to their relatives in Gaza, and they will continue to stand by them, both now and in the future. The General Secretariat of Christian Youth for the year 2024 submitted its resignation and appointed new members for the year 2025. This was announced during the Divine Liturgy, which was presided over by Father Dr. Jihad Shwehat, the acting patriarchal vicar for the Latin Church in Jordan. In the presence of several priests, nuns, former members of the Secretariats, youth members, their families, and a member of guests from various pastoral activities. The liturgy, which took place at the Church of the Virgin Mary in Swafiye, saw the appointment of the following individuals. Father Wajdi Twal as spiritual guide, Ghassan Asfour as Secretary General, Dana Tanous as Deputy Secretary General, Ibrahim Salam as Middle East Coordinator, Rosanna Haddad for the Working Committee, Sara Jamal for the University Committee, Abiyan al Nimri for the Secondary Committee, Marwan Farah for the Perpetuary Committee, Maria Qandah for the Budding Committee, Usama Tobasi for the Media Committee, Lin Dabain for the Public Relations Committee, Firas Tashman for the Training and Development Committee, Hanna Mreshah for the Public Service Committee, Wajdi Haddad as head of the music band. At the conclusion of the celebration, the logo for the Christian Youth of Jordan for the upcoming year was launched under the theme, Carry the Shield of Faith. 
The people of the town of Smekie expressed their gratitude for the recent pastoral visit made by His Eminence Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzabella to their town, which helped boost the morale of its residents. They pointed out that His Eminence met with all the Christians in the region, listening to their concerns and feedback. Their residents described this visit as encouraging, as it has motivated them to remain steadfast and reduce the migration of youth abroad. They shared that Cardinal Pizzabella responded positively to suggestions for providing endowment lands for citizens to work on. He committed to making these lands available to the youth free of charge, on the condition that they present economically viable projects. Additionally, he, his eminence, expressed his readiness to secure scholarship opportunities for students from al to study abroad and to establish a fund to support outstanding students. In a humanitarian gesture reflecting the values of love and giving, His Highness Prince Ra'ad bin Zaid patronized the honoring ceremony organized by the Jordan Eye Bank Friends Association for Cornea Donors. During his speech at the event, which was attended by official representatives including the Ministers of Health, Education and Social Development, Dr. Maawi al Bdur, the director of the iBank, emphasized the importance of spreading the culture of cornea donation and the association's role in helping the visually impaired regain their sight and improve their quality of life. Dr. al Bdur reviewed the history of cornea donation in the kingdom which began in 1992, highlighting that over 5,130 corneal transplants had been performed using corneas donated by Jordanians. In a religious context, Father Nabil Haddad, the head of the Center of Religious Coexistence, stated that cornea donation is a humanitarian act encouraged by Christianity, explaining that the Abrahamic religions agree on the importance of this charitable act. Meanwhile, the Grand Mufti of Jordan, Dr. Ahmed al-Hassanat, confirmed that cornea donation is permissible in Islam, describing it as a charitable act that preserves life and gives hope. At the end of the ceremony, Prince Raad presented certificates and appreciation plaques to the families of the donors and several supporting organizations. Dr. Basim Al-Sam'an, the Regional Director of Nursa Jordan in Palestine, hosted this week's episode of the program, Ainun al mashriq Father Nabil Haddad was the guest of the episode, following his participation as a representative of Jordan at the recent World Summit of Religious Leaders for a Green Planet, held in Azerbaijan. The summit focused on the impact of climate change on the environment. Father Haddad discussed the pressing issue of climate change, which he said threatens life on Earth due to recent environmental shifts. He emphasized that the Earth is a creation, a gift and a blessing, and that it is our responsibility to show respect for this creation through obedience and love for God Almighty. St. John de la Salle Church in Jabal al-Hussein held a festive mass to celebrate the feast of Blessed Mary of the Passion, the founder of the Franciscan Missionary Sisters of Mary. The mass was presided over by parish priest Father Ibrahim Nafa with the assistance of several priests and was attended by the parishioners who participated in various church activities. In his sermon, Father Nafa spoke about the life, spiritually and religious order of Blessed Mary of the Passion, which was founded on chastity, love and giving. He highlighted the virtues she lived by, including faith and poverty, following the example of Jesus Christ. At the end of the celebration, which was attended by Dr. Basim Sam'an, the attendees exchanged congratulations on this joyful spiritual occasion. The Ladies' Committee of the Cathedral of the Entrance of the Lord into the Temple in Sofia organized a meeting of love and fellowship, bringing together women from the Balkha Governorate, Salt, Fahis, and Safut, with women from Abdali in the cathedral. The event began with the participation of all the women in the service of the Paraclesis of St. Nectarios, Bishop of the Five Cities, followed by a spiritual message from Archmandrite Christophorus Haddad, the spiritual leader of the Balkha Governorate. This was followed by a lecture on prayer and the dangers of neglecting prayer, presented by Archdeacon Ramanos Samawi. The gathering concluded with a word from Archdeacon Ibrahim Dabur before moving to the Cathedral Hall. The event was marked by a warm exchange of fellowship and introductions among the women, followed by interactive activities focused on how to enhance the role of women in church committees and service. A conference organized by the Bible Society was held in Amman, focusing on how to heal from generational trauma and its impact on relationships between people and their ways of dealing with pain. Over the course of two days, participants discussed the theme of service in the midst of crisis and how, as servants of Christ, we can be light and hope for those suffering during times of challenges. At the conclusion of the conference, the participants offered prayer for peace, asking God to grant security to nations suffering from conflicts and wars, and to protect Jordan as a safe and welcoming country for those displaced from their homelands. 
The United Nations Relief and Work Agency for Palestine Refugees, UNRWA, confirmed that Jordan's strong and unwavering support for the agency serves as a shield against attempts to undermine it. The agency praised His Majesty King Abdullah's second stance in defending the rights of Palestinian refugees at the regional and international forums, highlighting the leader role of Jordanian diplomacy in this regard. UNRWA pointed out that Jordan is the largest host country for Palestinian refugees, hosting them on its territory. The agency also emphasized that it is the largest UN organization, employing over 30,000 staff members in Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, the West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem. These staff members work in various fields, including education, health, and humanitarian aid. A film produced by the Palestinian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities about the Church of the Nativity won the Arab Tourism Award. The award ceremony took place in a high-level official event in London, organized by the London Arab Foundation, and was attended by a number of British and Arab businessmen and tourism experts. The event was joined by Mr. Michel Awad, President of the Holy Land Association for Incoming Tourism Offices, Mr. Majid Shahaq, Director of Marketing and Tourism Media, as well as several tourism and diplomatic figures. The Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem holds great significance for all Christian denominations due to its association with the birthplace of Jesus Christ. It attracts Christians from around the world, especially during celebrations of Christmas, to receive blessing from the Holy Site. After nine years since its establishment, the Catholic University of Erbil in the Kurdistan region of northern Iraq is offering scholarships to the Yazidi and Turkmen minorities who suffered under the rule of terrorist militias. The establishment of this university aims to promote peaceful coexistence among the ethnic and religious communities in Iraq. Regarding this charitable initiative, Archbishop Bashar Warda, chairman of the university's board of directors, stated that after nine years, the university now hosts more than 600 students studying special Eastern studies, including theology and Catholic doctrines. He emphasized that the goal of these studies is to foster peaceful coexistence among various ethnicities and religions, and to create an open, vibrant community that believes in peace and shared living. The De La Salle Fairs College organized a sports marathon that started at the Hussein Sports City in Amman and concluded at the school's courtyard. The event, which was sponsored by Mr. Yusuf Laysawi, saw the participation of hundreds of students, both male and female, along with local community families. The marathon, held to celebrate the school's Diamond Jubilee, aimed to strengthen the bond between the members of the Jordanian community and enhance national pride among the participants. At the end of the marathon, Al Isawi honored the winners from various categories. The event also featured folk and cultural performances by the college's female students, which were warmly received by the attendees. Dear, dear viewers, we have reached the end of our broadcast. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. Pope Francis, the Christian hope which is realized in Jesus and continues in his kingdom, requires our commitment. His Majesty the King, we will continue to defend Jerusalem and its holy sites and preserve them based on the Hashemite custodianship. The General Secretariat of Christian Youth in Jordan appoints its members for the year 2025. St. John de la Salle Church in Jabal al-Hussein celebrates the Feast of Blessed Mary of the Passion. For more information, please visit our website, nursatjo.org. Thank you for watching, have a good day, and hope to see you again next time.